For the best possible experience, find a quiet place and use headphones. Thank you. In some ways, very few ways, the new world is superior. I used to have the capacity to believe that people could be better, could ascend their simplest impulses and become truly exceptional. But the world in which we lived was not set up to create better people. It was set up to sustain greed. We ignored our education. We had no rights to our own health. And we willingly contributed to the destruction of the only world we had. In the new world, the safety net of law and morality is gone. And what few virtues we once possessed are long dead. At least we don't have to pretend that we're better anymore. Everyone is anonymous now. With that anonymity comes power and a dangerous sense of freedom from responsibility. It's the same sense of freedom people cried for before the world ended. The freedom to leave others behind in a cruel game of survival of the fittest. And now we have it. If you want something, you can do horrible things to get it and still be free. And while we may be free of responsibilities, we can never be free from the consequences of our actions. We survived and evolved solely because of cooperation. Humanity has become a diaspora, spread thin. Many of us alone, struggling to survive in a world that now nurtures our worst impulses. How ironic that I should come to know the true face of my old world after it was gone. And yet, despite the refreshing honesty of the new world and the frustrating hypocrisy of the old, I will always feel the need to be lost in my old world again. Blissfully ignorant of our failures. Safe. like a grain among the sand. Past Bedtime Studio presents Philip's Apocalypse. Based on original material by Michael Johnston. Written by J.B. Stephen with Ben Ajang. Philip voiced by Michael Johnston. Music by J.B. Stephen. Produced by Ben Ajang. Episode 5 Meta Whoa! Oh, 
A flood of light spilled from beyond the door, blinding me, and I instinctively shut my eyes. The sound of a room with electronic devices, what was once barely audible white noise, had now become a claustrophobia-inducing sea of nails grinding on a chalkboard. It had only taken under a year in the apocalypse to make me forget how annoying the sound of the modern world was. As I regained my vision, what I saw before me took my breath away. Whoa. This... this is unreal. It just... we might be able to get help here. We found ourselves inside an underground bunker stocked to the brim with supplies, working lights, computer stations, radio equipment, and other electronics I didn't recognize. My eyes began to water. I'd become so accustomed to traveling mostly by night that I'd nearly forgotten how terrible fluorescent lights felt on the eyes. And then, the full force of a familiar smell hit my nose like a bare-fisted punch to the face. The smell of decay. Oh! I'll never get used to that. The discovery of the room was like stumbling upon an oasis in the middle of the desert. It contained everything we would need to survive for a good amount of time, but I still couldn't find the source of the smell. Oh, God, where's that coming from? What is that? As I approached the computer terminal, I noticed the chair had an occupant. Oh, boy. A lone body. A man that had been dead not all that long lay seated in front of the computer, the screen black. His skin had shriveled into his body and his head lay tilted to the side, mouth agape, arms dangling from the sides of his chair. None of it made any sense to me at the time. A secure room with working electronics seemed like a paradise. Why would this man be dead in a hidden room all by himself? This doesn't make any sense. There's so much food. He didn't starve. Maybe he was injured. He clearly hadn't been murdered, and plenty of simple injuries could lead to infection and death without treatment. The room itself was built like an impenetrable bunker accessible only by elevator with a swipe card, and I only discovered it by accident. Against all odds, there was a computer sitting right in front of me. It had apparently been well protected from whatever it was that wiped out everything electronic. I needed to answer the nagging question that had plagued my mind from the start. Was there even anything left for me to go back to? Hmm. Computer's unplugged. But why? What were you doing down here? It just seemed awfully tense. I hardly noticed it at the time, but looking back, I should have considered his nervous disposition more seriously. Something clearly wasn't right. Okay, if I can uh, hook these back up, maybe we can get some answers, find out about San Jose. I hope. Okay, this goes uh, here, and uh, there. Okay. All right, I think that's it. You should be able to turn on the computer. Shit. Come on, come on. Wait a second. The power feed to the computers was tied to some kind of breaker with a high voltage switch. Okay, looks simple. Just flip it up. Okay, alright. Please don't electrocute me. Get. Yes! Oh! Yes, yes, yes! Okay, alright. The monitors flickered to life as the station booted up. The system seemed very bare bones. The simple command prompt appeared against the black screen. The words, loading main and auxiliary systems, appeared on the terminal. 
All right. Okay, okay, let's see what we got. All right, uh, command terminal. That's old school. Should be simple. Okay, I like it. Computer science 101. Uh, ME2 network. Swipe access card to continue. I noticed there was a card swipe slot attached to the main tower in front of me. Access card. Uh, access card. Maybe the dead guy has it. Oh, boy. God, what's up with the access cards? The odor became more intense as I approached the body. I never did get used to that smell. Okay. Sorry, dude. Uh, oh, what is this? Access card. Yes. Okay. You really seem to like your access cards. The key card was easy enough to find. It was a simple white card. Initiate John Cavendish. What does initiate mean? I noticed from the corner of my eye that Aegis was still uneasy. Something was clearly bothering him in this room. The feeling was beginning to be mutual. Don't worry, boy. We're gonna get out of here soon. All right, what does this do? Okay, access card. Success. Simple lines of text appeared on the screen from a user named H. It read, You've been absent, Initiate 451. Where have you been? What the... Is... This... This... Oh, this... This, this can't be real. Could this be a real person? Live? I typed my response. Hello. New text from H quickly appeared under my response. Is this a working network? Is this... Is this a real person? The stranger's harsh tone and cryptic response gave me pause. How could an operational network still exist? Even if one had somehow survived the catastrophe, how could there still be someone alive using this network? What? What was going on down here? For a moment, I was lost in thought. As I sat my fingers on the keyboard, H suddenly began to type again. Verification number. Okay, what does that mean? There's no number on the card. I must have... I must have missed something. I again rifled through the corpse's pockets, finding nothing that resembled whatever verification number H was talking about. Then, I noticed a small notebook inconspicuously placed on the desk in front of me. I opened the notebook to find a hastily written message, the letters jaggedly scrawled onto the page. Log... One, my dear friends, I hope that this journal finds you well. I trust, I trust that it will, will not fall, fall into their hands. Although, I suppose if it does, it means that we will have already failed and none of it will matter anymore. I'm very concerned about my injury, so I decided to leave notes for you in the case the infection gets to me before you do. On my way back from a supply run, I was ambushed by some maniac in the valley. I suspect he is likely responsible for some of our missing comrades. I was careless and left all the weapons behind at the supply point. If by some miracle you find your way here through the beta passage, take extreme caution. I believe that my cover may be blown. Man's journal was a Pandora's box of troubling questions. 
log too. I picked up some colonist chatter a few days ago, so they must be in the vicinity. They didn't report in, and I think they're waiting to ambush you. I was forced to cut all communications to protect you. Colonist? I wonder what that means. What was he trapped down here waiting to be rescued? Log 3. The fever is getting worse, but, but I, I have a contingency plan. I left warning markers outside. I trust they weren't too obvious. Wait a sec. Are those people around here now? This doesn't make any sense. Please take my backpack with you when you leave. You will find, find my, my SCC note. Wait. Backpack? What backpack? Sure enough, underneath the desk in front of John's body was a hefty bag. One in much better condition than mine. My broken strap was getting very annoying to deal with. Okay, backpack. All right, what do we have here? It was a veritable treasure trove for the perpetually lost and wandering. A compass, maps, packages of meals ready to eat, and an advanced handheld radio with spare batteries. I turned it on to see if it was working. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Uh, that's weird. Uh, he hello? next. Log 4. Man, I can barely read this. I'm, I'm getting close to the end now. I don't have much time left. You know, thinking back on it all, I should have been more careful. I took too much. I got greedy, and it might have cost us everything. At the rendezvous point, look to the Aurora, and you will find the supply location. Everything you need will be there. Please know that I tried my best. I'm sorry. I spent so much time mulling over the contents of the journal that I nearly missed the final portion, written in large, jagged letters. Important. Do not, under any circumstances, activate the computer systems. What? The colonists are always watching the network and Harbinger will find you. Harbinger? What the f- Uninitiated. You are not authorized to be here. The booming voice came at me like a grenade, sending my heart and mind racing a mile a minute as I tried to decipher who or what was talking to me. The voice appeared to be coming from speakers mounted above the computer monitors. And from the corner of my eye, I could see that a dormant camera hidden in the corner of the room had now become active, its faceless gaze pursuing me. Then, the camera turned and focused on John's body. Unfortunate. He died before he truly became useful. In his arrogance, he thought he could outmaneuver me. Pathetic. Who are you? What is this place? Ignorant child. I am the All-Seer. The knower of all things. The Great Transcendent. Okay, I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't understand. What are you talking about? In the end, Philip Parson. <laughs> what you call me is irrelevant. 
knot wound itself tight within my throat. How do you know my name? My perception is infinite. Nothing can escape me. Okay, this doesn't make any sense. You have my gratitude. You have completed the circle that is Initiate 451's failure. And now, all he has fought for will be destroyed. Along with you. The boy who unknowingly sealed his fate. My whole body was shaking. And I realized very quickly that Aegis and I were in great danger. There is no escape. Surrender. Or perish. What the hell just happened? What is this place? My mind felt like it was drowning in mud. Nothing was clear anymore. My heartbeat was pounding so hard in my ears that I thought I might pass out. I had not yet realized the significance of my interaction with the mysterious voice, but the one thing I knew for certain was that I'd stumbled into something that I shouldn't have. Aegis had long sensed the danger that I'd been oblivious to, and I'd fallen prey to my naivete, my vice that was curiosity, and I would soon become entangled in a complicated web of deceit, conspiracy, and death. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, shoot. Okay, Aegis, what do we do? Um, uh, supplies. We need supplies first. I grabbed whatever I could. Food and water, and shoved them into John's backpack. Okay, time to get out of here. Okay. Okay, now what? How are we gonna get back up the elevator? With its cable severed, there was no way to climb two stories out of a bunker, let alone carry a hundred pound wolf with me. I had nearly collapsed into a state of panic. Then it hit me. Wait. Read the journal. John mentioned another entrance. He was waiting for help, so that has to mean there's another way out of here. <laughs> What's that going, shots? Okay, okay, we need to go right now. Okay, think, Phil. Think. Where would an entrance be? This room. It's only so big, there's no doors. There has to be some way for fresh air to get down here. Like a, a crawl space. Yeah, yeah, a crawl space. Yes! There was a vent located behind one of the shelving units. The sounds of gunfire from the elevator shaft seemed to be intensifying, seeping into the bunker room. Crowbar. Yes! Okay, buddy. Let's go. God, I never want to see this place again. The vent was barely large enough for Aegis and me to crawl through. I forced him in front of me so I could motivate him to keep moving forward. Aegis! Come on, buddy. Keep moving! Hey! Almost there. Almost there. The hidden entrance was well removed from the gunfire down the ridge. Aegis and I emerged from the small passageway, and from our vantage point, we could see about 30 men engaged in an outright shootout. Their weaponry was nothing I had seen or heard before.
carnage was shocking, and it was no longer safe to stay anywhere near Embrace. Aegis and I escaped back into the woods as quickly as we could. The contents of John's journal were running through my mind. Could I have triggered the battle? Nothing else made any sense. It had to have been the radio. Maybe I had inadvertently given the signal for John's group to move in. For all I knew, I had cost many of them their lives. The trek back through the woods was exhausting. We ran for as long as we could. The voice from the bunker haunted my restless dreams that night, and for many nights to follow. At least for the time being, we were safe. The days ahead would prove to be difficult. Philip's Apocalypse, in association with Michael Johnston Media, is a past Bedtime Studio original production. For more information, visit pastbedtimestudio.com. Yes, that time.